It's time to stop using Open Zeppelin Defender version 1, of course. It's time to use version 2, which is so much better. And let me tell you guys, you are running out of time. So you have only 45 days to migrate from Defender version 1 to version 2. June 1st is the last day where you can use Open Zeppelin Defender version 1. But don't worry, version 2 is so much better in terms of UX, in terms of features. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to migrate from version 1 to version 2. So all the features that you love in version 1 and you are used to them and you are using them probably on a daily basis, I will show you every feature how to find it in version 2. So watch this video till the end to make sure that you migrate successfully all your DeFi protocol smart contracts from version 1 Defender to version 2. Without further ado, let's get started. So as you can see over here, this is Defender, Open Zeppelin Defender version 1. And we have this huge alert message that in 45 days, Defender version 1 will retire and reach end of life. So we have to upgrade to ver from version 1 to version 2. Two. This video tutorial is based on this amazing page in Open Zeppelin Defender Docs, how to migrate from legacy to version 2, and I will show you every single feature that you love and you are used to in version 1, how to find it and how to use it in version 2. Alright, so the first thing that you are probably familiar with is this side menu over here in Defender version 1. And you have here user management, address book, notification channels, and team API keys. Don't worry because this is Defender version 2 and all those things are now inside Manage. So if you go to the Manage section, you see here notification channels, you see address book, and you see API keys. Now the only difference is that instead of user management over here, now it's called team members in version 2. Too. So remember, everything is under manage, all the notification channels, address book, team members, and API keys. Now, this add contract button over here with import contract, create safe, and create time lock does not exist in version 2. Instead, you have this add address button under manage address book. So this add ad address button is equivalent to import contract in version 1 where you can specify the contract name, network and address and create safe and time lock through Defender is now deprecated because it's much easier to just create safe directly with Gnosis safe and to create a time lock contract using the Open Zeppelin library for creating contracts with either with Hardet and Foundry. So this is the equivalent to add a contract to your address book. But if you want to create a contract through safe or a time lock, you either need to use the safe interface, which is amazingly simple and easy to use, or the time lock library by Open Zeppelin with Hardet or Foundry. Now in version one, you could uh, create proposals from the admin account using this add proposal button. It could be either to pause the contract, to change the access control, maybe upgrade the logic, or just maybe a generic action. So now everything in version 2 is under action. So under actions, you can go to transaction proposals, and then you can submit a new transaction proposal. You can fill in all the information, the title, description, target contract, what function do you want to execute, and what is the approval process to approve this transaction. So remember, everything, all the proposals is under actions, transaction proposals. Now remember this awesome feature that Defender gives you a relay that allows you to send transactions directly with HTTP API rather than using your own wallet. Either it's for activating proposals or creating actions or deploying contracts. Well, this was here under relay in version one, but in version two, it exists under a manage Relayers. So here you can manage all your relayers, create new relayers, see their address, enable or disable them, create them for multiple chains, and now everything is under manage 
relayers. So it makes more sense now, right? You can manage all your entities, all your data, relayers, addresses, notifications, everything under manage, but then you have all these amazing sections for the life cycle of your security of your product, right? So we have code inspector to find vulnerabilities while writing the code and the repository and the contracts. You have the audit phase, the deploy. When you deploy the contracts, you want to monitor them right after, then you want to maybe activate some actions and, and define access control to create transaction proposals, etc. So now the structure and everything makes more sense and it's much easier to navigate and find different features and configurations. Now, the next thing is Autotask, right? So here you had Autotasks, where if you want to send transactions on a regular basis with a schedule or with a webhook, maybe you want to sponsor or relay transactions for your users so they won't, be, won't, won't need to to pay for gas or maybe to react to an attack or suspicious event to pause the contract or something. So now all these auto tasks exist under actions. So you can just go to actions, the actions tab and create a new action. And you can see here that it's exactly very similar form. So you can define the auto task name, trigger it based on schedule webhook sentinel workflow. Now it's schedule webhook monitor and workflow spoiler alert now the sentinel became monitor you will see it later but here you can see how you can define new actions uh, connected to a relayer if you don't want uh, the user to pay for gas you can just connect it to a relayer it's going to relay this transaction from this eoa account and then you can define the code of this action what kind of automation you want to do with javascript which brings me to the next subject which is the secrets so back in the days you could define in auto tasks here in secrets create new secrets secret values that can be used inside your auto tasks now in version 2 it's much easier right so again all the definitions all the configurations are in manage so under manage you have here secrets and you can create here new secrets based on name and value and then you can use them wherever you want now the next thing i want you to do is to forget about the word sentinels there is no more sentinels in version 2 in the final version 2 we have only monitor so all the sentinel uh, that was here at first sentinel reader doc now it's under monitor so you can create monitoring for your smart contracts which makes much more sense and also now it comes with so many more features and advanced things that you can do you can create different monitoring you have integration with forda you have templates for monitoring you can see here the monitor activity so remember anytime you want to monitor your smart contracts while they are deployed on the blockchain you go to the monitor module inside the defender version 2 there is no such thing sentinel and the last thing is the logging. So we don't have this logging page anymore in version two. All the logs can be found under logs. We have the logs page. And in the log section, you can see everything that happens in Defender version two. So to summarize, to migrate from version one to version two, it's not that complicated and we covered all the differences. You can see that version two, the UX is much, much better. We have so many more options. Everything is organized in a much more easy to digest way. You have all the sections, all the configurations and the addresses, API keys, secrets, accounts, address book is under manage, you know, the secrets, the relayers, everything is configured there. And here you have those separate models to basically secure your DAP, your DeFi application, your smart contracts in every part of the development and production lifecycle from the coding part to the monitoring and actions and incident response where you want to detect attacks and block them before your users get hurt and your protocol TVL gets stolen. I hope this guide was useful for you. And please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you want to read more regarding Defender version 2 or this specific tutorial, how to migrate from version 1 to version 2, please check out the Defender uh, version 2 docs. You have this page migrating from Defender Leg Legacy to version 2. And you have so many other pages and tutorials of how to get started and how to use Open Zeppelin Defender version 2. Another cool thing to note is that Open Zeppelin updated their pricing model. So now, first of all, if you are a single builder, you can access Defender version 2 completely 
for free using my link in the description below. You can sign up and create your free account and use it for free to explore the different features and maybe it will be enough for you for your own needs. Now, if you're a professional, if you have a protocol, maybe a team or an enterprise, then you have custom packages. So for professional, you have 450 per month. And then obviously you get many, many more features like higher usage, rate limits, uh, private networks, automation workflows, uh, more availability, much more offerings in general. Of course, if you go to the enterprise plan, it's going to be more pricey, but this is like the best option. If you, you are a DeFi protocol with significant amount of TVL and you want to make sure that your users are safe and the money is safe, this is a small investment compared to the value that you're going to achieve from this tool and for the risks that you want to mitigate and the money that is on the stake, right? So uh, you should definitely check it out. Uh, you can start as builder and then maybe... If you have more needs, you can upgrade to professional and then to enterprise. And if you have any questions, feel free again to ask them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Web3 security videos and tutorials. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next guide.